Hello folks, hope you're having a good day today. Today I'm going to take a look at another short story by H.G. Wells, this one called The Star. I've recently looked at a couple of short stories by him, I've taken a look at this, this stolen basilisk. Um, I've tried to look at some of the other short stories too. Um, it's important to understand that H.G. Wells, as well as many other writers during that era, kind of lived in the era of the short story rather than novels. And in fact, many novels were written in episodic short story forms in magazines or, or newspapers and so forth. In fact, many famous novels that you read today in novels like, you know, Charles Dickens novels and so forth were actually published um, in a serial format uh, uh, and so forth, like A Christmas Carol, for example, um, and his Christmas story of Ebenezer Scrooge and so forth, where every single chapter uh, was published uh, in, in, in <laughs> uh, you know, not one, not in, not in a modern sort of novel, novel form. And so H.G. Wells is living in that era too. So he's going to write a lot of short stories and get them published out there. That's the the era of the Penny Dreadfuls and then the Pulp era and so forth that would follow afterwards. It does a lot of the same thing. So he wrote this sto short story, The Star, in 1899, so the last year of the 1800s. Um, so I thought it would be fun to take a look at it. Um, I have it published here um, in this great fic science fiction uh, collection with a couple of his other stories, including uh, The Stolen Basilisk um, and some other short stories, too. Um, I do like how H.G. Wells can be very much, even though he's a soft science fiction writer, he can be very much this um, strong sort of seer of futures um, and, and kind of coming up with a lot of sort of subgenres and so forth. And you'll see a lot of that um, and with a lot of the different things that he's written. Now, again, he's very much more of a soft science fiction writer. That's fine. That's just who he is um, and so forth. And so I would consider him more of the, the father of soft science fiction, where I would consider uh, Jules Verne the father of hard science fiction. Um, the two of them were, you know, kind of peers, and, and sometimes they're, they're very competitive. <laughs> and Jules Verne was not a super big fan of the way that uh, uh, he thought that H.G. Wells would shortcut science by um, just coming out with a quick little invention to get to the plot and the point uh, that, th that made no sense whatsoever rather than actually exploring how to get there um, and the practicalities of that. A classic example that I've given before for you is where Vern, they both write stories have, of people traveling to the moon. Um, in one case, he has uh, he researches the science and comes up with a scientifically plausible way of doing it, whereas H.G. Wells literally will invent a, 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 an element that's lighter than air that they can make their ship out of. Um, so basically, he comes out with a magical, uh, you know, <laughs> fantasy device that's meant to get him to the story he wants to tell. People on the moon, that's the story he wants to tell. By the way, that's the story that Jules Verne wants to tell, too. He'll just spend chapters, you know, he, he personally researched it, spent chapters writing about how it was developed, how it was discovered, and how it was launched, and so forth. Um, so, uh, so, so Jules Verne is very much a hard science fiction writer um, to, to, you know, to, uh, to, to Wells' sort of soft science fiction. Uh, but that's fine. Wells is a heavily influential writer uh, from, from uh, uh, alien invasion stories to time travel stories and many more. Um, in The Stolen Basilisk, which I just reviewed for you, I just reread probably for the fifth or sixth time um, I, a, few day, a few weeks ago, he also will take a look at um, germ warfare. Uh, which I believe is kind of the first time that was kind of modernized in sort of a science fiction modern context uh, with people uh, basically creating test tubes of uh, strong, powerful diseases and using them against each other to destroy places and civilization. So he kind of, kind of uh, foresees modern germ warfare. Um, so again, he's, he's definitely somebody who can do that. He's got the chops for that and so forth. So the stars where we're going to be taking a look now, again, it was published in the last year of the 1800s um, and so forth. In this collection, it's not that long. It's about 15 or 16 pages long. Um, and again, I won't keep you too heavy with spoilers for a few reasons. One is, is that I spend too much time spending the spoilers. It's, it's a 15-page short story. You can read it yourself. Uh, I and mean, probably a time it took for me to talk about the story. But second of all, I don't want to spoil you too much on a lot of these stories. I just want to give you kind of a, the overarching concept. So the overarching concept in the star is that this star will enter um, the, the, um, you, the galaxy. Um, our galaxy um, will start traveling near towards Neptune. Um, and, and, you know, what Wells is going to point out that at first, First, only like a handful of people noticed that it was coming in and so forth um, and then as it gets near and near to Neptune it becomes brighter and brighter and brighter um, it will spend some time right around Neptune and as it does it becomes more and more important and easier to see the naked eye and so forth and it gets more and more attention on it um, and then um, it will leave Neptune and start heading for Earth and become larger and larger and larger um, this star will um, this, and that we're seeing in the sky, um, this heavenly body. And as it gets closer and closer to Earth, obviously it's become more and more of an attraction. Um, more and more people are going to be involved with it. More and more people are going to be stargazing, uh, you know, amateurs, uh, astronomers, and so forth. Um, and, and thus um, are going to become more and more of the object that appears uh, to be moving towards Earth. And then, then 
of course, there's going to be uh, people who think this is going to be the end of the earth. There are doomsayers, naysayers, and so forth, as well as many people who are just going to continue on as they, as though nothing had ever happened, um, and so forth. Um, and that's about probably about halfway through, probably about seven or eight pages into the story. So I'll stop it there. Which is about half the way through there. And again, that's just basically the story. Obviously, then we'll finish up with what happens. Um, is it going to hit Earth? Does it not hit Earth? Is it past Earth? What's going to happen? Uh, who, what's, what is the star? I mean, all those different sort of things are going to be questions that are going to be asked. And then some of them will be answered during the course of this story. Now, uh, I want to take a look and see if this kind of idea of an early um, a planetary body that had moved around from planet to planet or stars that were moving around in the sky or so forth had something that had been done pre-Wells or if this is the first time they'd ever shown up in print. Um, and with a lot of Wells stuff, it's kind of hard to tell because it's so old. Uh, and sometimes my Google foo is very, very strong. And sometimes it's very, very weak. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to, uh, so I was not able to find an earlier example than this. But I wasn't able to find somebody telling me that had done the research and said this is the first or it's not the first like i couldn't find like a blog by somebody who's an expert in the field you know i'm just a, i'm just a reader right i'm just gonna you know i'm definitely gonna be somebody I, I just read a lot of books but i'm not a specialist in english or anything like that right i'm just a fan of of the genres particularly the older stuff that people will forget or the stuff that kind of set the tone for a lot of things that followed um, i enjoy the context of things and so um, and i also enjoy the fact that there are a lot more great things that we haven't read than new things that are coming out which is where this the the name of this channel comes from and it kind of explores and unpacks these forgotten classics from science fiction fantasy and horror this is definitely a good example thereof, the stars. So check it out. I'll go ahead and link you to it uh, and, and below. Um, there's definitely going to be places online so you can read it for free. You don't have to spend any money on it if you don't want to. And so forth. Although if you're like me and you want to have a hard copy of it, then sure, go, go, go to town. Um, and so forth. Now, Wells actually publishes a lot of short stories. So you can actually go out there and read a lot of them uh, through today. He'll self-publish collections of his short stories in addition to publishing them in the normal sort of short story model of the time of selling them in the Petty Dreadfuls um, and then uh, in, the, in the beginning and then the main part of the pulp era. So he's definitely sort of somebody who can definitely get um, some definite traction with short stories just as much as he can with his novels. But I think that we remember his novels more um, because I think they're so strong and so evocative and so powerful evoking genres like the first time travel story the for uh, science fiction time travel story at least um the first you know uh, uh alien invasion although there had been invasion stories before that um within the science fiction genre this sort of idea of aliens out there that would invade earth and so forth you know you have so many of these strong and evocative stories that you're gonna the island of dr moreau for example another great example that you're gonna find out there that are incredibly good and, and set the tone for many genres to follow that came down the pike that i think it can sometimes be hard for us to kind of go back and revisit some of his short stories too um, but there's a lot of stuff in his short stories that's just as fresh and as thought and as thought evoking as his novels and so i think the stars another good example of that now i don't think it's as good as stolen basilisk i think stolen basilisk is about half half the length i think it's a stronger story for that i do think there's at least two or three pages we could have cut out of this on um, the descriptions and so forth but this still it's it's fine it's, you know a 15 16 page short story i'm not going to lose a whole lot of sleep because there was an extra five minutes of reading it uh, out of a 35 minute short story right so anyway i'm going to link it to you in the comments below and i'll go ahead and cut this review off Let let me know what you thought about it if you've read the star uh, or anything else uh, from the HG Wells, particularly his short stories uh, and what you may think of them and so forth. I'm happy to engage you more. Did you agree or disagree uh, with my thoughts on the star? Or if there's anything in particular you want to talk about that I did not go over because of the spoiler heavy nature of this, uh, you know, uh, of reviews and so forth, I'm happy to go over you with de detail in the comments below. Um, and hey, if you watched it this far and you enjoyed it, there's no reason not to hit that subscribe button. There's going to be so many more reviews and similar things to follow. And if you've watched this video all the way to its conclusion i want to thank you so much for taking some time out of your day because we all have busy days we all have such busy lives and the fact that you spend some of that time with me is very humbling so thank you again